get the alignment uh, close to right, I had to heat that guy back out and heat him back up and bend it back out, so close to where it was originally. Um, I, I really wanted this drop down just a little bit lower, um, but this piece of pipe actually already had that bend in it. I'd used it to make some things for the boat, so I decided to just go ahead and go with it and uh, just raise that up a little bit. So while that's cooling off, I'm playing around thinking uh, it might make a kind of a cool tail light if I can figure out how to attach that on there. These are <laughs> steam vents for radiators, not car radiator. Uh, for um, my grandpa was a heating and cooling sheet metal guy, and uh, when he passed, all of these uh, little parts, no one really uses this stuff anymore. Uh, they do, but not just your average guy, but I have a whole box of these. Um, so I was thinking about uh, cutting off uh, the front part of this and uh, putting a light in it, or maybe just drilling a hole here um, and trying to get a light to seat in there, drilling out this portion here. Putting something like this in it, LED bulb with a battery or something, in, and making that uh, be a tail light of some description on the back there. Uh, and then I'm planning on, I think I mentioned in another video, I'm planning on doing a spoon break up here, which is going to require me to kind of notch out a piece of the fender so that the spoon can actually come into contact with the tire. And again, I don't really care about how much I destroy or mess up on this bike because pretty much it was free. Uh, so let's see where we line up. Uh, on that piece there. Such a right here. See if it can not tip over, maybe. Hopefully, you can see there. I'll have to weld this uh, piece and grind it. Before the kiddo goes to sleep, or I won't be able to get done. and a spoon from this room. Alright, let's see what we got here. As far as the line that goes. Uh, I just want it uh, relatively close to the level. Let's see. Hold me. Needs it to come up a little bit more, but I'm gonna call it good. It is on the bubble. And uh, our alignment here is gonna have to be off slightly. Where does that put us? I am gonna live with that. It's not perfect. Don't need it perfect. We're going to leave it at that. So we're going to weld that back section uh, back here. It's really hot. Don't touch that. Get that to kind of strengthen. Tack this pipe on as far as I can back. And then weld it. And then we'll be able to adjust and weld this front portion. And then the frame itself should be relatively uh, simple to put together. So let me get that welded there. 
and ground because I know I'm going to have to grind it most likely uh, to get this pipe to sleeve over all the way. And then that's just going to leave heating and banging this down, welding, and welding. So, um, not a whole lot frame wise left, but I need to do the things that are noisy um, right now and get those done. So, that's what we're going to do. Taking a wire wheel to this area that I'm going to hit with the welder. People who know bikes know this is a very weak point. That's why I want to make sure I sleeve over that red pipe. Uh, completely over this all the way so that I can weld it back into here. I'll probably have to gusset some, some things in here too. So let me flip that over and get that other side wire wheeled and we'll get that tack welded. So the simple solution to this would be to use a front fork from the bicycle, but to make sure I have enough strength since I cut I cut part of this off, so we've lost half strength. Hammered this pipe on after I welded that piece underneath, so I've prettied that weld and got that welded back up. Hammered this piece on, and then I'm going to take this sprocket and make uh, kind of a gusset to go right there, and then I'll just heat and bend it so it kind of comes up like that. Um, easy thing to do to do just use other bike fork, but I want to try and see if I can make this work. Uh, so yeah, we'll go cut that guy out and uh, see what that looks like in there. And weld that in if it looks halfway decent. Well, we had our first casualty. Uh, <laughs> this original piece that I had wanted to use, I think I had addressed in a couple of different uh, videos how I was concerned about, about this piece here. And originally, I think bike frames, the older bike frames, were they, they would braze rather than weld. And it's more of like a, a copper or a brass type weld on the steel. And the steel that came off of that is pretty thin. I don't know what gauge this is, but it's, it's significantly lighter than, say, a bicycle fork. I have a helping visitor here. And anytime you cut, which I did, I, I addressed this in one of the videos, I, I cut and modified this, made it basically half as strong. And then that was the weak point as well and I got on it and uh, had it in the garage stood up and down on it it was fine it was a little springy and then I thought well you know I'm just gonna jump on this and, and see what happens before I get too much further involved in in the build and so I jumped on it and I broke it but I'm glad it happened then instead of uh, first time taking it out after I welded everything in so um, and the welds aren't pretty, that's for sure. But uh, this, I used a bike fork here and bent, they were fairly straight, bent these up just a little bit. And I probably should have gone just a little bit more so I may heat those and go uh, just a hair more. And then what I'm gonna do, rather than try and bend this piece here because this aligns so nicely, um, it's gonna really make for an easy weld right there. It almost looks like it was made for it. So, I think if I just heated and bent this up just a little bit more to catch uh, this, and so these are, this is just a, a bracket picked up at, at Menards that I had in the in the bucket, and it has an extra hole in it because I originally used it uh, as a, a vang on the sailboat, and uh, it ended up not working for that, but I kept it because it was pretty good steel. So my plan is to kind of put that there, uh, round this off so that it looks a little prettier than just a square piece. Um, and then I'll either probably bring this up and just weld it to it rather than just putting a bolt in it. Because I think what's going to happen, it's going to want to slip out right here uh, on the fork. Because obviously on a fork, you're putting the pressure down the opposite way. 
So I think I'll, I'll go ahead and put a bolt through that to hold it, and then I'll just weld it, and then I will round off whatever's hanging off on the little bracket. I'll, I'll round it and make both sides kind of match this, this bike fork. Um, and I don't think that that, step back just a little bit, I don't think that look is, is terrible. If that was painted, you know, the same color and everything as the bike is going to be, I don't think that's, that's going to look bad. Let me put the rim or the fender on there. The other nice thing is too, it allows me to actually put a bigger tire on here if I wanted to, uh, in the future. So, you know, if I wanted to go with a, I got a 700 on the front. And I think this is a 24 on the back. It's either 24 or 26. Um, whoops, wrong way. Flip that around. So that's going to allow me to have a pretty good sized tire on there, too. Get this all balanced up here. If we can. Or not. Come on. Cooperate. It's not straight, but. I think that's going to look pretty good on there. So, keeping that line straighter, too, without having the bend right here like I had before, uh, adds a little length to it. Kind of makes it look cool. So, got to clean up the front where those welds are and everything. That was a really difficult uh, thing to weld for me for whatever reason. I couldn't get the angle right. I'm not a pipe fitter, so I had trouble with that. But it's there, and once it's ground down, it'll... It'll look fine. You're either a really good welder or a really good grinder. One of the two. Let's just say I'm a really fabulous grinder. Not a great welder. I get the job done. That's, you know, learning's half the battle, I guess. Practice makes perfect. The other phrase, practice makes pedestrian. Yeah, that's not going to cooperate with me, is it? Come on. So I don't I don't think that drop's gonna look too bad in there. Step back as far as I can here. That's gonna look pretty cool. I wish I could do the whole thing with a fork, and I even thought about cutting off uh, another fork, cut it off about right here, cut this off, cut the, the ends of this off, and sleeve that fork over and weld it, and then bend it up. But what I liked about the bracket is this is a solid it's not going to want to try and slip out at any point here. That's a solid piece of metal, so that allows everything to kind of stay bolted up in this rear wheel to not want to slip out. i got to replace this spoke, too. Um, find a spoke that'll fit in there and replace that. I really like that rim. It's a little... It's a lot beat up. Not even a little. Most of the spokes are, are bent back out. I They were pretty crashed up. There's still a bent one there, I see that I need to fix. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to keep the front rim red. I may paint it white. But I probably am going to keep it a 700 up front. Or if I can find a 28 that will fit in there, I can always bump that fender out just a little bit more, notch it out and bump it out. Uh, 28s might look pretty cool on the front. But I've got a pretty good pile over here to choose from. so nice thing is, now that I've got uh, these two pieces back, I can complete my my seat, put it back together and make a shop seat out of it, put some wheels on it. So, I uh, got those pieces back. Kind of wish I wouldn't have cut them now, but you never know until you try. So we are going to, um, probably what I'm going to do is go figure out the point where those need to be bolted after I bend them up just a little bit more and then uh, we'll go from there and get that welded up and then I'll get everything ground down and the other thing I need to do is I need to yeah don't pick up my weld I know it's ugly I'm not done yet I gotta go in here and heat this and, and suck this down a little bit um, but I think overall strength wise it's gonna be good now um, I, I may go in here and put some kind of a gusset here to weld this section all together because that is kind of a springy part of it and I have these uh, I think this would be strong enough I don't know what this is, 16 maybe? Um, so 
have a couple of those. I also have leftover lawnmower brackets. And I have a bunch of these rims that I've cut. And although they're kind of challenging in themsel themselves to, to weld, you know, I might do something like that to just kind of keep it open. Kind of makes the, the line, you know, come off the top and then flare back out. So that's kind of a cool, kind of a cool look. I could also, also use a piece of uh, bike tube. I've got plenty of tube over here to pick from and uh, heat and bend that to match. Um, I've got I've got some some things to choose from, but I don't know. I guess it might look cool if it was a solid piece. So I may kind of play with play around with that with a piece of cardboard. And uh, when we figure out what we're gonna do with that, I will turn the camera back on. And uh, as of right now, I'm gonna go. My next move is to heat these again. Just gonna bend them just about another I don't know half inch maybe. I'm getting to the point where I'm getting close to a 45 and I don't want to get bent much further. And I probably could make that work. Um, but what I'm really liking uh, with that is we're pretty much dead level uh, on this part here. So I really think that's about where we need to be. And you can see I'm only off, you know, what, half inch getting that bolt hole up of this up to this bolt hole. So if I raise that up a half inch, you know, then I'm use the camera hand to catch. Sorry about that. If I raise that up, I put my I need to put my my uh, table screw back in that I guess so keep that up. Then my I'm gonna lose level is what's gonna happen. So, let's see if I can do this without knocking this whole thing over. So, I'm going to lift that up to that point where I can hit the hole. We're off level now. So, I'd like to keep it as level as possible. I realize it's probably going to be impossible to keep it exactly perfect. So, that's where we're headed. Now, I'll turn you back on once we get to that next step. I was going to have to rebuild uh, the interior hub of this wheel anyway. Uh, look how dry, how dry that is in there. Grinding them up, metal shavings everywhere. But when I went to, uh, got those bent up, and when I was going to, um, get the camera up there, replace uh, the bolts on the end, I noticed this. You see when I turn that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Get the camera up here. So that center shaft or the axle it is bent pretty badly. If I turn that, you can see it. It's bent right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and while I'm at the stage where I'm ready to kind of weld these and get them mounted up on where that goes. I want to just go ahead and rebuild that. So I'm going to take the pieces I can take off of this one. I have laid my wrench down somewhere. Dang it. <sighs> they grow legs, I swear. Well, uh, anyway, I'm going to take uh, uh, another one apart that I've got over here. Um, because I don't really want to run to bike project today. But I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that while I've got it apart and kind of grease up. The bearings still look pretty good. I probably should um, replace them. If this other wheel has better looking ones in there, they're just really dry. But they're not all chewed up for being ground on as much as they were. So let me rebuild that and we will then get these brackets cut and weld it up and go from there. We'll do as I say, not as I do. So for bike parts you're supposed to use a special kind of grease. You can use, I believe, marine grease. Um, but this is what we have. Uh, 
world class lubrication, all purpose grease. So that's what we're gonna use because there's a bike that you know, it's just a a crazy little idea I had. It's not uh, anything that's super critical. So this is the new center hub I've taken out of the other wheel that I had, and of course it didn't use the same uh, <laughs> size nuts on all of these, so I'm forced to be creative. Fantastic, it's proving to be a challenge. I did get the wrong size down on there. It's a pretty uh, neat little bike tool, but seems like often the ones you need are back too far. need some fish eggs. The other wheel I took apart had just loose bearing casing, no race. I guess the wheel, the hub itself uh, serves that purpose. I'll get this off of here. And we will gook up the center of that. Probably wouldn't hurt to gook the threads up too. And coat that really well inside and make sure that this is spinning freely before I get it all together because uh, I'm going to be taking it apart anyway if we don't do it the first right the first time I guess and it's I, I did kind of take a little brush and kind of brush out the inside of that so that it's not totally gooped up or funky with metal. And, uh, now the way this one works, it has, uh, I don't know if I can get a light on that where you can see it or not. Let's see if I can find my flashlight. So these have like a little, uh, there's a track inside there. Um, so I couldn't use the the nut from the one I just took apart because this actually fits over that little bearing uh, packet with the built-in race thing that I put in there. So just go ahead and kind of put a little grease inside of that so that when that goes back on, it's also pretty greased up. And let me find the other ones over here, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to get that off of there. Oh, wrong way. So let me get that off, uh, get this back together, and we'll make sure that this spins freely before we go any further and make sure that we're we're set to go ahead and uh, weld those pieces on. The other thing I'm going to do is drop, so we can get the picture of that. I'm going to widen, take these two pieces here and just stretch them out a little bit uh, so that the uh, little brackets I'm adding to the wheel won't hang in because what's happening um, you can see this. What happens when I put those on, they hang in like this. I don't want that. I want them to hang straight. So I'm going to actually heat and just bend that out just a hair. I think it'll be fine. So here's where I come picking sometimes on the weekend. This is Bloomington Community Bike Project. And it is packed full. Bike project stuff. 
all the way to the front. We're in the back half of it, actually. It's an awesome place.